Thank you very much, sir, for that address. And uh, it means the world to us that uh, you could make it here in, in support of this program and in support of our efforts. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we should, we will continue with the second session where we left off. Uh, there's one, uh, since all uh, doctors are here, it's uh, a lot of NGOs. There's one scheme which we have launched in the state of Maharashtra. Probably it might be the only one in the entire globe. That is called Blood on Call, Jeevan Amrit. Anybody wanting blood, any citizen in the state of Maharashtra has to just dial 104. And blood is supplied by the government of Maharashtra even in the city of Mumbai and even in the rural areas, even in the remotest part of the state, to any nursing home, any hospital, anywhere, even components we supply. At, and the charges are whatever is fixed by the, the processing charges fixed by NACO. We are trying to dissuade hospitals from forcing patients to get patient, uh, people to donate blood or asking them to go to private blood banks and buy blood. That is what we are discouraging. So 104 is the number for blood. And we have our trained technician who comes and does the cross-examination and everything. And the blood is given within one hour to whichever hospitals require. There's a little problem with the private hospitals because they don't encourage uh, some of them say that the government ka blood quality teach me here and all. So that's the initial problem we always face. Because I don't know the difference between the government blood and the private blood bank's blood. <laughs> well, and the difference is on the charges, 100% the difference is there. Because the private blood bank charge much, much more. So uh, that is one thing. And the ambulance thing. We have the state of art ambulance in the country, the state now. 935 ambulances in the entire state out of that 140 in the city of Mumbai and absolutely free it's 108 with a doctor 24 hours available to the citizens of Mumbai anytime anywhere you get an ambulance within 15 to 20 minutes and you have a trained doctor to handle the patient right from the time the patient ambulance comes there with all the latest equipment of European standard including three different type of, type of stretchers. We have one wheelchair which can be used as a stretcher for uh, uh, in buildings, to bring down patients, which has got a stretcher which is also a scoop for trauma patients or burn cases, and which has got a mobile ventilator, a pulsometer, and everything possible we have fitted in it. And uh, the response is very good. We have had about 110 deliveries already in the ambulance in the remote areas before reaching the and one was I met a lady in Aurangabad last week on Monday she delivered a twin in the ambulance so even minor surgeries are conducted in this ambulances so y'all can you know spread this news and both are absolutely ambulance is absolutely free of cost you don't have to pay a single rupee for it. Uh, the ambulance. Friends, <clears throat> on behalf of uh, the Observer Research Foundation, and I can also say on behalf of the corporation, we want to thank <coughs> the Honorable Minister for taking time out because, as he mentioned, you know, it was 2 30 and I called him and he was still at Andheri. He came all the way from Andheri just to make it for uh, the round table. And uh, all the information that you've given the uh, minister is very heartening. It's good to know that so much is happening in the government sector, that Maharashtra, that Maharashtra is marching ahead in public health, number one in institutional deliveries, reduced maternal infant mortality, ambulance service, all these are very welcome initiatives. We do for that in the time to come, Maharashtra coaches ahead in all other big healthcare challenges, including, as you yourself said, in water, sanitation, and roads. Thank you very much, and keep coming to report.
ladies and gentlemen, taking off where we left, uh, we will move on with our discussion. And I would request uh, Dr. Gokani to kindly speak about uh, physical fitness and education and yoga. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, first I'd like to thank uh, ORF for having invited me and uh, almost prevailed upon me to have come. I wanted to look for a back door to slip out, but I didn't get all the doors were shut I'm right here before you. And for which I have to thank Shahida for her incessant charm in trying to bring me, bring, bring me here. Um, I have listened to the most elite people talking on the most uh, fascinating aspects of diabetes. And I don't know if there's anything more I can say, but I'm reminded of a monk who attended my lecture once and then had the last word. And I'll tell you what exactly he said. He says, Dr. Saab, you have said a lot, but I have studied a little bit in the Brahm. I thought that the diabetes is a very simple thing. And its treatment is like this. You keep the Uttar Pradesh cold, and you keep the Madhya Pradesh cold, and you keep the Dakshin Pradesh cold. So you don't have any problems. Which means you keep your mind cool, you keep your stomach strong, soft, and you keep your limbs warm. And I don't think that you have any problems. And I think if you go to look at it between the lines, everything is covered. But coming to the Uttar Pradesh, which has to be kept warm, and that's physical fitness and exercise. Uh, the most important thing I see is that it is a well-established fact now that every joint is connected to every gland. And this is there in our physiology textbook, but not in these simplified words. Every joint, if it has to be moved, has to move the muscles. And if the muscles have to move, they need energy. And for energy, you have to connect to the gut, to the glands, and to the liver. So it's obvious that if you move a joint, you have to send a message to the glands that you better wake up and start secreting your hormones, because I'm going to need energy. And that's why a man who goes to the gym for the first time is going to be found wanting he do it three reps and five reps, but stop after that. And thereafter, when he continues to go to the gym, he can go up to 50 reps and develop big muscles. So it's a very known fact that physical activity influences the glands, and the pancreas is a very important gland. So if the pancreas can be, some, of, some people ask me, can you activate the pancreas? I said, I can't activate the pancreas, but you can activate your joints. And if you activate your joints, your pancreas get activated. So, it becomes a very vital tool to be able to move your limbs and then prevent diabetes. So that's the first thing I think we need to have in our city more and more open spaces which have been eaten up by a whole vested interest lobby of the builders and their nexus with all these other people related to it. So we need to insist as people, as citizens, as healthcare providers that we meet open lobbies and open spaces for people to be able to walk, to get some fresh air, to get some relaxation, to be able to pursue a sport within walking distance and not have to rent a car, to be able to go to long distances to some remote corner where they can pay lots of money to exercise. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is that when you exercise out in the open as opposed to a gym, you get fresh air and you get sunshine. Both are for free. And sunshine influences the, the manufacture of vitamin D, Vitamin D is directly responsible for calcium. And ladies and gentlemen, calcium is not only for bones and teeth. It's for muscles, it's for nerves, it's for digestion, it's for heartbeat, it's for almost everything, including the secretion of insulin. If you study the very basic molecular structure of, of the pancreatic beta cells, the interchange of calcium from intracellular to extracellular is what releases insulin. And if you have calcium deficiency, you may have an insulin deficiency too, because you cannot secrete that insulin. And therefore, it becomes very important again to be in the outdoors. So, we are dealing with calcium, and calcium leads to in increased insulin secretion, as well as helps the carbohydrates to metabolize, to produce energy, which is the main source of all our existence. So we are looking to see everything is interlinked, whether it be good food or whether it be a hard exercise or it be uh, fresh air, sunshine, adequate rest, and so many other things. So if we get all these things together, we need we we don't need to have an epidemic of diabetes on our hands. So we have the solution, but we need to put pressure. We need to get things together. We need to get our act together. Now, as far as yoga is concerned, um, yoga is a lifestyle. And it encompasses everything that I already just said. 
But some people ask me, how does yoga help? Yoga helps in five five ways I can see. And I'm sure the people, the pundits in yoga will tell, us, tell you ten ways how it can help. But let's see, yoga helps relaxation exercises like Tavasana, helps you to calm your adrenergic tone. So as you lower your adrenergic tone, you increase you decrease the manufacture of extraneous glucose from gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. And uh, you get a lower blood sugar when you have a calmer mind. That's the first way. The second is pranayam. Pranayam improves oxygen, oxygenation of the blood quantum and this oxygenation helps to increase the efficiency of every organ in the body including the pancreas and liver. And therefore, uh, if the pancreas become more efficient because of better oxygenation, the secretion of insulin will improve. Third, all exercises done on the abdomen which squeeze the solar plexus will perforce improve the blood supply of the pancreas and therefore improve the insulin production and the insulin response to it, to all, all the stimuli that it responds to. The fourth is some of the some of the yogic exercises and kriyas are they, they are directly dealing with cleansing of the system. And therefore a clean colonic, a clean gastrointestinal system will preclude to fermentation, fermentation preclude to toxemia and the reduction in toxemia helps to improve general bodily well-being. And fifth would be um, uh, the joint asanas which are flexibility. The flexibility improves, you can make your, if you make your joints flexible, your pancreas become flexible and therefore the response is improved. When we look at it in the totality, you see yoga has an extremely important role to play in the diet, in, in treating diabetes. And um, uh, physical fitness, regular exercise, sunshine, yoga, and other aspects of lifestyle, if they are implemented or assisted to be implemented by the administration, I think we can make a huge difference in our fight against diabetes. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have uh, three more uh, topics go before the floor is open, so please bear with us. We have just these three quick uh, topics. I just request that we stick to the three minute time limit because we have overshot significantly. Uh, May I request Dr. Subha Rao, the head of department, uh, Vadia Children's Hospital, uh, to give her talk on uh, diabetes and children. Ma'am, please. Dr. Rajesh is also here from the institute. Uh, see, children, diabetes and children is something, I guess, is a different ball game altogether. And um, when I was listening to the various talks people spoke about, the diet, the drugs, the exercise, the, I mean, all these various aspects. What is paramount in childhood diabetes is uh, the need for insulin. There is no other substitute besides insulin as the mode of therapy. And over the past, uh, I guess, 20 years of my experience, what we have been seeing is when you have a child with diabetes, especially when you are working in a hospital which caters to low middle or low income group kind of children and insulin seems to be a bit out of reach to say major of the families. They see there is a tendency to under insulinize or under treat these children and compromise in terms of quality of care. So diabetes is not a disease only of adulthood or adolescent children. We have presently a newborn who was born eight weeks, eight months of gestation, who's having diabetes is in the NICU just now. And we also have a 15 year old, poorly controlled diabetes, name the complication we have it, and of a uh, child who's admitted in the world. So, uh, childhood diabetes is a different ball game. There's no substitute to insulin. And uh, children being taken care of by parents, you have a kind of interface and management. You know, like an adult, if you give and say an advice, maybe you would expect that adult to listen to you and maybe take care of the, himself or herself accordingly. Here we start from something like dependence. The whole family is dependent on you for advices, care, uh, how to do the calorie count, how to give your insulin dosage, how much activity to do. And then there is a phase of interdependence. 
whereas doctors and caretakers you teach each other as to how to take care of the child. Finally comes that phase of independence. So to go through these three phases of transfer of care or optimum care is a big task. And in that uh, scene, we have a child who is growing. Like, like I said, the newborn is going to go through infancy, childhood, puberty, so on and so forth. And with that, the body changes are going to happen. His control in terms of diabetes is going to be very tricky and needs to be really very meticulous for him to give him an intact uh, life in terms of survival. Um, or to this August audience, what I would like to actually impress upon is the need for providing insulin, I think, should be paramount uh, in terms of any steps taken to uh, drive against diabetes in Mumbai, uh, especially as far as children is concerned. Availability of insulin, affordable insulin to each and every juvenile diabetic is important. I think all of us should put our thoughts together to see as to how we achieve that uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share a few thoughts about counselling. And uh, I'm representing the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. We've been, uh, we have, along with the medical care and dietetics, mental health has been given tremendous, ex tremendous importance in our foundation. Uh, when the families come, they're in a f complete state of shock because everything that was so routine till day before yesterday or last week is suddenly shaken up. So our first attempt is to give them that kind of support that it's okay, what you're feeling is fine. You know? So we as specialists in emotional health, we're, we're trying to create that space of unconditional love and acceptance that what you feel is okay and we're here with you, we're here for you and we'll take it with you as a journey. Okay? So we that's our first level at which we are working. The other level at which we work is because Children, like ma'am so beautifully expressed that at every stage, every year, the child is going to face situations, academics, um, friends, bullying, rejection by peers, rejection by teachers, I mean it could be anything. So we're with them and as counsellors our work is to help them to open up to choices, possibilities, what, what can they do? You know what? How can they empower themselves? Our whole thing is that in in to create that space where every situation which you come across, let's say, what more can you do over there? And for that, the emotional release is important. So they need a safe space where they can just cry, they can shout, they can scream, they can just do what they like, knowing that they are in safe care. Okay? So counseling becomes very very important uh, uh, and. We're very privileged at JDF, I mean, you know, us, us who are contributing, we're very privileged that our senior doctors have given us that space, that okay, you know, you have your time, you have an hour with a child, uh, parents may need help because they need a space to cry out and to kind of, uh, you know, deal with the cultural issues that they face, the social issues that they face, grandparents, relatives, it's, it's like ma'am said, it, it's, it's just another completely different scenario with children. Okay. So, our work in counselling is to create that space for empowerment. We want to help them recognise that you have choices, you have possibilities. They don't appear suddenly, but as you let go, as you clear, as you allow your emotions to kind of be expressed, something good can come out of the discussion for you. And the journey has to be theirs. We are only supporting because I'm there today, I'm not there three years down the line. So it's, it's a question of self self empowerment. So that's where we counsellors are coming in and we hope that many more of us in this field will have opportunities to contribute to the health sector. Even though we are not in that sense designated as health counsellors, I mean we don't have that specific label, but we look forward to contributing much more in this area. Thank you very much. I'm Kevin Mehta. I am from Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. I'll tell you a little bit about Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. This foundation was formed by Dr. V.S. Ajgaokar sometime in 1982-83. Our main aim is to be a bridge between a doctor and a patient. What we try to do is try to teach them everything, counsel them as Ami said. And my topic is affordability and accessibility. I mean all the previous Speakers have already said about affordability. Uh, 
our honorable minister said that insulin is going to be free. So what can I say now? Yeah. I mean, I cannot say anything. But I will tell you about juvenile diabetes that all juvenile diabetics has to do, as per our protocol, at least twice blood glucose monitoring to adjust their doses. And nobody has spoken about glucometers and strips. I would like to say that if you consider, I mean, the, we have calculated a cost of a juvenile diabetic per year, something around 16,000 to 18,000 rupees. If they are doing twice a day monitoring, if they are using 50 units of insulin, not analogs, RNN, and protocol test if they are doing twice a year, roughly it comes to about that amount. Now we can imagine uh, a middle class family also cannot afford 3,000 rupees per child if this is the case. But fortunately there are some institutes, some companies who are helping us, like you are also conducting CDIC programs, I think. So what I say, I have seen insulin, most of the people are giving free, but strips, we have to think about something. Certain tests we have to think about. And another thing is, we get patients from, say, a roadside a digger, he, one, I mean, one year back, a parent came and I, I taught, I mean, I tried to teach them everything, but I found that for three months, if somebody goes to their house, whenever their short time is, I think they will come to the labor in another three months' time. That is where, you know, in certain areas, accessibility, I would say, is missing. Because for them, I mean, for us to teach them in one hour in our clinic is not possible. They need that help for at least about three or four months and then they come on the line. And another problem with the families is invariably people misunderstand between type 2 and type 1. And that is the biggest problem that we face to bring them to their mind that this is not something which you are talking about. I mean, I will end at this. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Ganesh Shanba from Helping Hand Foundation. I run an NGO that fosters public awareness for diabetes. Now, most of the stakeholders I see are either from the medical fraternity or medical practitioners or pharma companies. I felt there was a need to start an organization by the patient for the patient. So that was the trigger, and I have started this uh, uh, Helping Hand Foundation because I am a diabetic myself close to 25 years. And uh, we have done over 20,000 checkups and detected a lot of new cases uh, in, in the diabetes and that has been the challenge. Today we have shifted our focus to juvenile diabetes. And today we and my wife we support close to 22 to 25 underprivileged juvenile diabetes. We give, anybody comes with a letter for insulin, we financially fund them or we give them the insulin. Or we regularly for three years were giving free monitoring strips, no money charged to these people. Now what is the thing is, we have gone one step further. We have tied up with a medical uh, you know, clinic where every month we give these children free checkup. Last month we did a dental checkup, then we did a thyroid checkup. So every month throughout it is going. And also what we do is we have emotional counseling for the parents. Because today caretaker is more important because these children really don't know. If you and the more you tell them not to eat sweets, they eat because they become so rigid. So the parents have to be counselled. So we do parents counselling exercise also. Then we do exercise to increase the creativity of the children. We call them and do you know like arrow modelling or maybe doing uh, photography or doing clay modelling because this is very very important because this actually makes the child feel normal. Otherwise, in the school, he feels that why is he being isolated? Now, the key takeaway of my here is because I would love to appeal to MCG and ORF. We want to ramp it up. The focus has to be more on juvenile diabetes. There are so many underprivileged juvenile diabetes whose parents actually don't even give them medicines. And then they land up with some complication in some public hospital. And then we have to rush and do that. So my question is, how can MCGM help me? I have got that urge, I have got that, you know, I really want to ramp it up and take it up to the next level in the juvenile diabetic space. 
and only a patient can explain a patient better. And even in the general diabetic, I really admire all the exercise that you have been doing. But what's more important is emotional counseling for the caretakers. I think this plays a very important role in every, every household. Because the fact enough, you know, the more you bombard a diabetic patient with information, the more confused he get. And as it is, he's confused between allopathic and alternate medicines. And there is a so much of, uh, you know, confusion. So please, I think what's more important is to emotionally, the key takeaway of my discussion is, one, NCGM can really look at emotional counseling for the caretaker. Two, open up more centers for juvenile diabetics. There are only few public hospitals. And, you know, uh, and what's more important is, these children need to go to local and please concentrate on giving a lot of education to the parents because you know they have also become so rigid, they feel helpless in life and what's more important is that education. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, good afternoon everybody. I am Mahesh Balodi from Star Health Insurance. Now uh, we had been discussing about uh, uh, affordability and as far as we have not discussed the complications of uh, uh, diabetes, especially when it is untreated, uh, even if it is treated after some time, these patients they develop cardiovascular disease and retinal detachment and problem with eyes and limb amputation, as Sherry said. And she also said that uh, most of the companies, and in fact every company, they reject uh, insurance to such uh, patients. In fact, uh, this we have uh, in our company, in Star Health Insurance. Uh, type 1, especially to type 1, nobody provides insurance. They are outright, they are considered as adverse risk, which goes against the principle of the insurance, and therefore they are not provided. However, we have started one policy, and we do provide them cover to type 1 also, and to type 2, even if they are bad conditions, we provide to them also. Right? So, Sherry should be happy, in fact, that we have started that, and secondly, uh, patients especially when they have this kind of problems, those who go through CABG and PTCA, that is stenting and bypass, to them also we provide policies, which are also adverse risk and they are also declined by all the companies, so we do that, right? So this is the kind of things which we have started at Star Health Insurance, although uh, uh, we have started the ad also, but uh, we find it very difficult because uh, reaching to the people we are finding it difficult, although we have tried our best, and therefore, I'd like to have your help also for that. Thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we take about two or, two or three more at the most, and uh, subsequent to that, we have three very quick presentations. Uh, with, uh, so, so let's go ahead with these two or three more points, please, sir. I am Dr. Debashis Das, surgeon by profession, deals with only the complications of diabetes. But today, I represent. Association of Medical Consultants. My president, Dr. Sangeeta Pikle, has been very active in this forum, and uh, she is unfortunately not here. She could come with me. Now, we in AMC have been doing work for the community, but not directly for the diabetes. This year, we have done. This year, Sangeeta's motto is "Do it right and chill," and the chill part comes in uh, very effective in diabetes control. Now, we had a program on 29th of June, which we brought out a booklet, and we had a program on traffic a health issue. At that time, we did a lot of work on diabetes, on uh, the life of a person in Mumbai. And it was very unfortunate when we realized that average life expectancy and Mumbai girls' life expectancy is different. We die five years earlier. Pollution is one of them. Traffic, stress is the other thing. And as we all know, the diabetes definitely gets worse with stress. Our attempt is to make this city a safer place. And we are a member, we are an association of 8,000 consultants, out of which there are about 1,500 nursing home owners, and they are all for service to the patient. We believe basically that health is our issue. And Disease is only a byproduct. So if we can get better health, we'll have a better community, we'll have better services. Thank you, sir. It's thankful to Oarafat and, and uh, Saina as I could join this long round conference today. And 
I am a doctor Bhagwat Indadeej. I got my maternity surgical hospital at Andheri. I am chairperson of a yoga center at Santa Cruz. And we are affiliated with the SVS, our world class university of yoga at Bangalore. And we are carrying out uh, research based everything about the diabetes. And all over, not only India, but all over the world, we have got campaign of the Stop Diabetic Movement, STM. So then we are carrying out different, different uh, these researches in the hospital also, in Los Angeles, in UK, and other places. We collect the blood of, of a person uh, having diabetes before uh, joining the yoga and after, after four weeks. And there is drastic difference. We, we don't ask to oh, discontinue the medicine, whatever they are having. Uh, and then after that, gradually they have to taper down the medicine. And the main thing, as we know, obesity, and I heard a lot about the uh, type 1 and 2 and for the yoga from all these experts we are. Uh, but you see, in this, we have stress is the first point, as you uh, all admit, right? And the uh, obesity. And this both helps in, with the yoga. And I have got a couple of books on the stop this one, uh, Yoga for Diabetes. Those who are interested can read and some literature. Thank you very much for all. We have time for just two very quick remarks. One from uh, Dr. Maurik and a wrap up uh, comment from Dr. Daksha. And uh, then we have uh, three presentations on innovation. They are each going to be two or three slides only. And they're going to last only for two to three minutes and then we're wrapping up. So please bear with us. Uh, Dr. Maudi, please. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to say, I initially to bring up a child to a level that this is an adult, especially the girl child. I'm not saying because I'm a feminist here. Uh, the point is they went go home and then they don't come back from their village only to know much later that she died because of insulin not being available or not being taken to her home. And I think as Dr. Sudha said, Insulin, insulin, insulin is the need. There were companies who were, you know, funding these, uh, supporting these uh, girls, but somehow I don't think it's been consistent. So we lose out on that consistency supportive program. I just want to say one thing here that now when we are looking at diabetes, so we had this malaria almost 2005-06 when we started monsoon camps. But at that camps we never concentrated on diabetes, which we could have done even at that time. Now, eight years down the line, it's still a good thing to do, but we have to, you know, keep it consistently going. Uh, we have two problems in uh, the other things. One is a metabolic syndrome, which we see in plenty, and PCODs in young girls. I think these are the two things also where we should concentrate to see that diabetes doesn't develop in the long run in these groups of patients. Thanks. Uh, I mean, uh, just summarizing type of uh, actionable points, I think we should take this discussion beyond these four walls. So, uh, first important which has been stressed uh, is uh, the importance of emotional counselling. So, we need to do something on the counselling front. Number two is availability of strips and insulin which is an also a very important issue. Look into the juvenile diabetes. Four is the schools and some kind of curriculum where we can start roping in the education department and number five will be yoga and some kind of activities. So if you could take some of the actionable points, Mr. Kulkarni, I would uh, request you to share the information and the context of everyone so that we'll see how we can partner with them and uh, expand these services uh, better. And I'm sure that MCGM alone cannot stand on this because we need partnership from Association of Medical Consultants. We would, I would request them that uh, definitely a screening drive which is uh, we are planning and we would request all the private doctors and nursing homes to actually screen patients uh, one day free of cost, maybe on World Diabetes Day. So that would be a great service to the community. So I think if uh, we can have just uh, quick uh, actionable points out of this, uh, then it would be really worth. Thank you.